Okay. Allora, non è che tu ricasso. Tu ti hai detto che tu ti hai detto che tu ti Marana Shakti Vikasa. Edha Shakti Vikasa. Netra Shakti Vikasa. Ora si tu in casa. Come check the gossip. Once again, Thank you. 
शक्ति विकास बुजुर्ग शक्ति विकास
Bakacağız tane şekilde yıkarsak. Udara sekti ve kasak abdomen, breathe out and pull in the abdomen. Upside, head down. Kalk mudra. Now 60 degrees. Degrees, breathe out and shake. Ninety degrees. No need. Okay, today we stop Sukhshmayama with abdomen and go to Shavasan.
डी ब्रेथ Feel the breathing going in and coming out to various parts of the body.
Okay, get up and sit down and do pranayam. Today we'll skip asanas. We'll do pranayam and meditation more. I will teach you sectional breathing. Sectional breathing means there are three parts in the lungs. Guruji, just the laptop or camera. Your head is not visible. So we have three parts in the lungs, upper lungs, middle lungs and lower lungs. Lower lungs are behind this abdomen. This is called, there's a, a membrane called diaphragm, which is here at the bottom of lungs. So when you expand lower lungs, the abdomen gets expanded because the diaphragm will be pushed down. So when you're doing this bhastrika type of breathing, we are doing lower lungs breathing. Are you able to understand what I am saying? It's not that lungs are inside the stomach, but because of the lower lungs expansion and contraction, the diaphragm is going down and up. So the abdomen is going up and down. Normally people are doing erratic breathing. When they breathe in, the stomach will go inside. And when they breathe out, it will come forward. Normal average person will be doing that kind of breathing, which is totally wrong. Abdomen should always come forward when you breathe in. Normally also, not only during Astriga Pranayam, but any time during the day also, or in the night. The correct breathing is it should come forward when you breathe in and it should go backward when you breathe out. Just do normal breathing by keeping the hand on the abdomen. Should come forward when you breathe in and should go backward when you breathe out. Now this is one section, the upper, upper chest is the upper lungs. So for that we have chest breathing, so you have to keep the head 
backwards. Keep your bend the head backwards with hands like this and breathe in and breathe out only through chest, upper chest. No abdomen, only upper chest. Then middle chest, keep your hands like this. Breathing in, breathe out only through middle chest. No abdomen and no upper chest. No abdomen once again. Again, upper chest. Middle chest. Up down. Yeah, in upper chest. Really just Up down. Again, up and down. Middle chest. Up down. Actually, all the three have to be combined uh, one after the other. One, two, three. One, two, three. Breathe in through upper chest. You don't have to keep the hands. Just directly concentrate, closing your eyes. Breathe in only through upper chest, then and only through middle chest, then only through bottom chest. One, two, three in sequence to make one full breath. Breathe out again through upper chest, middle chest and bottom, abdomen at the end. Thank you. 
Now, same thing you can do with uh, left to right and right to left, and along below. All three sections, one breath. Inhale and exhale.
Okay. Have you all done satisfactorily? Are you feeling better? Yes, Guruji. So you told that no kumbak, only purak reja. Uh, only purak and reja. I'll explain more about pranayama today. There are four steps actually. Puraka, Rechaka, Kumbhaka and Bahya Kumbhaka. Total four are there. Bahya Kumbhaka means breathing out and not inhaling and holding without breath. Like what we do in Uddiyana Bandha. For example, you breathe out <coughs> and pull in the abdomen and hold it without breath. We are doing in Sukshmayam also, this is in the standing position. Kumbhaka means like Kak Mudra. What we have done in Kak Mudra, we breathe into the mouth and hold the breath. Like for example, I'll show you. Then breathe out through the nose. So, Puraka is inhalation, Rechka is exhalation, Kumbhaka is internal retention, Bahya Kumbhaka is external evacuation and retention. So, now, this uh, in Anulom Bilom Pranayam, we are only doing Puraka and Rechka. Kumbhaka also can be there, but not now. We will do later Kumbhaka after one or two weeks, after one week. So now the prana, which is manifest as oxygen in the external air, vayu, vayu and prana are not exactly same, but they are closely related. What is prana? Prana is not one of the panchabhutas. Panchabhutas are Prithvi, Apas, Tejo, Vayu, Akash. But where is prana then? Can anybody ask that? So Vayu is not exactly Prana. Prana is life energy which is generated by the conjunction or mixture of Vayu with Agni. Prithvi, Apas, Tejo. Tejo means Agni. And Agni and Vayu combine. Prana is produced. Are you following what I am telling? So life energy is produced when Prana is produced when Vayu and Agni are combined. And Prana is there everywhere. Prana is there in the universe, not just in our breathing. Because all living beings, right from amoeba, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, human beings, all these are due to Prana. In other words, we have a Prana Sukta explaining the functions of Prana, its presence and its role in the universe. You can study that if you want to, if you can. Prana Sukta of other way. So this Prana, Prana Poindi, Prana goes away then, the body is dead, whether it is human body or whether it is animal body or whether it is a plant body or a microbial body. If prana comes in, then it is alive. So prana is most important. Prana nam, prana eva, jiva nam, ayu, that is life. It's called jan. In Urdu, jan hai to jahan hai. So whole world, whole universe is present for you only if your prana is intact. So now prana ayama means, ayama means Regulation, control, modulation, or balance. So, pranayama is regulation, control, modulation, 
and various techniques of controlling prana and spreading through the body and getting the benefits of it in the body, human body. So pranayamena yuktena sarvaroga kshayo bhave. It is the correct pranayama yukta. The yogic correct pranayama if it is performed. Then sarvaroga kshayo bhave. Any disease, not only corona, but any A to Z, anything, Sarva Roga Kshayohave will be destroyed. At the same time, the same sloka says, Pranayamena Vyuktena Sarva Roga Samudhavaha. By performing wrong pranayama, you will get all diseases. New diseases will come. Lung problem, heart problem, everything will come if wrong pranayama is performed. Wrong means what? Vyukta. Viparita. Opposite to the correct principles. That means either the procedure is wrong or the method or the movement of the organs is wrong, opposite. Or even the prana is wrong. Suppose this prana outside is polluted. Suppose you want to do pranayama in city somewhere in the main road. Delhi. Delhi. Even in Hyderabad, uh, many portions are most of the world is already polluted. Then you will get all new diseases. So it is better to avoid pranayama in all such polluted environments. Because the lungs will not expand. The lungs will contract if there is no oxygen, adequate oxygen. So timing is also very important because early morning there will be not much of pollution because vehicle traffic is not there or industrial pollution is not there. Of course, the whole world is already polluted. To go to Himalayas, you may get some fresh air, pure oxygen. That's why I go to Himalayas. Those who want to go to Himalayas, you can go. Of course, inside Hyderabad itself, if you want uh, the best possible, then you have to go to lakes, Vendipet Lake, Shamilpet Lake, <coughs> any forest. So you will get some fresh air there. Of course, I am only teaching you now the techniques. Those who want to perform the program, you can see the difference. If you go to Vendipet Lake, your lungs will expand more or Shamilpet Lake. I go there quite often. I purchased a house nearby there. So now, I also have a, a farmland for yoga purpose. We can meet there one day, we can come there. So pure fresh air will be there. In the outskirts, another cool. Now, coming to pranayama, uh, we have two types of pranayama. One is Hatha Yoga pranayama, and other is Raja Yoga pranayama. Okay? We are covering uh, both partly. Hatha pranayamas are around 10 in number. We have already covered one. Which one we have already covered? Tell me what is the name of the pranayama which we have already covered? Anunomilom. Anunomilom is not a Hatha pranayama. That is a general, it is like saying, uh, uh, it is like uh, taken for granted as normal like taking food. But I have taught you one specific Hatha Yoga Pranayama in the last 10, 10 days or so. What is that? Which, what is the name of that? We already had a discussion also on that. Nobody knows the name of what Pranayama we are doing daily. Bastrika. 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 You are all Sanskrit experts, right? What does the word Bastrika mean? Don't know. In Sanskrit, without 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 uh, breathing, I'm asking abdomen, abdomen exercise. That word, what does it mean? I'm not asking how to do. What that word means, bellows. You know these metal uh, people, blacksmiths. They'll have a bellows machine. 
Hello Center is a football type of thing with skin. So they will put the air into it, it will expand. If they remove the air, it will contract. They will, they will be using it to uh, make fire for the furnace. And they're pushing like this again. So they take the air from outside. When they take air from outside, it expands like a football. When they push, the air goes into the furnace and becomes thin like a football. Then again, it expands. Then again, it goes. That is called Bhastra in Sanskrit. So Bhastrika means like bellow breathing. Where is the football? We all have football in your body. Where is it? This is the football. Belly, belly. Yeah. This is the football. So breathing out, it should go inside, become thin. And breathing in, it should come expand. That is the Bhastrika Pranayama principle. And we have already done that, right? Many times we have done. Yes or no? We have done in sitting position, left to left, left to right, 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 left to left, right to right, left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Have we done that or not all this? Do you remember? Yes, yes Guruji. The entire thing sitting in Padmasana is called Bhastrika Prana. The same principle, bellow breathing, is utilized in Sokshma Vayam also. In standing also. As I told you, Kapalbhati and Bhastrika are practically the same. Because the difference is very, very minor. The difference is in Kapalbhati, you push it and leap. It will automatically come forward. In Bhastrika, you push it and again push forward. So when you push forward, you are breathing in. In Kapalbhati, you push it back and leave it. Automatically, you will breathe in and it will come forward. So, whether it you are doing consciously or whether you are doing unconsciously, the second motion that is breathing, coming forward of the abdomen, that is the difference between Bhastrika and Kaparabhati. Kaparabhati is not a pranayama. It is one of the six kriyas. So, Bhastrika is a standard pranayama. In all the classical texts of yoga, Kaparabhati is not mentioned in the pranayama chapter. Only Bhastrika is mentioned. So it is wrong to <coughs> call Kapalvati a pranayama. It is actually a kriya along with other kriyas. That is a separate story. Another problem with Kapalvati is when you breathe out, the oxygen is gone. And you are leaving it whether to breathe in and then come forward or not adequately. Some people don't breathe in properly. So they become breathless. So they go on breathing out and don't breathe in properly. They will get giddiness and fall. Some people, not all. So it Bhastrika is better because you are consciously breathing in. Because without breathing in, if you only breathe out all the time, then there is no oxygen left in the body. You will get giddiness through carbon dioxide and you collapse. So it is better to breathe in and breathe out. That's why Bhastrika is better. Do you follow what I mean? So in addition to Bhastrika, we have other eight pranayamas. Surya Bheda, that is for getting heat. Then we have Sitali, Sitkari for cold. Then we have Ujjayi for throat. We have Brahmari. For the head, Murcha Plavini. There are all the Hadeva Pranayamas which are mentioned in blood pressure. Adi Unnavalu Bhastrika Cheya Chaguru. Blood pressure Unnavalu Bhastrika Cheya. Oh, Cheya. And a Melaga Jayali, too much fast Jayali sounds like that. Blood pressure ki Savasnam is the best treatment. And inverted positions are not permitted. The Sarvangasana and Sirshasana are not permitted. You have to practice Shavasana a long time. Every day, morning, evening, 
20 minutes you practice shavasana your blood pressure is going to become normal okay you understand what i'm saying shavasan and yoga nidra whenever yoga nidra is possible shavasan is always possible so actually those so who practice likewise, uh, diabetic there is no restriction no guruji no, it is not concerned with diabetes at all so diabetes can be controlled through shankha prakshalana and some of the asanas and also this bhastika pranayam in there no actually those who practice yoga will be perfectly healthy if you really practice it correctly if you are saying i am having x y d z the problems that means you are not practicing yoga perfectly so those who can uh, practice yoga correctly they'll automatically get cured of all these problems so first of all you stop worrying about it your know, mental attitude is also very important perfect health because health is your birthright when you are born did you have high blood pressure did you have heart disease except of course there are some congenital heart patients who are having heart right from the birth i'm not talking of them most of them are not like that normal people who are born they are born perfectly healthy so as they grow up they become experts in getting diseases how by doing all wrong things in life eating wrong foods breathing wrongly sitting wrongly walking wrongly not doing any exercise eating wrongly so health is your birthright and you are healthy you are going to be healthy and if at all any problem is that will also go through yoga practice so don't worry about all these things okay so now coming back to pranayama so bhastrika pranayama we have covered we have covered anulom vilom pranayama now in the anulom vilom is not one of these ashtakumbhakas as they are called in bhastrika and adha yoga it is just like normal eating food like that so within rajayoga pranayamas in the same this is called nadi shodhana pranayama anulom vilom is actually the original correct name is nadi shodhana pranayama Why it is called Nadi Shodhana Pranayama? Because we have so many Nadis in our body, channels of prana. <coughs> they are purified. <coughs> so there are many ratios in Raja Yoga Pranayama. In the Puraka Rajika Kumbhaka sequence. So by going through different ratios, you can achieve different levels of Kundalini arousal. Finally. there will be what is called keval kumbhaka there is no breathing automatically breath stops by itself and then the next step is samadhi all that is very advanced i am not going to teach all those things to you but i have gone through from my gurus so we will be mostly covering raja yoga pranayama which includes nadi shodhana pranayama to a basic level which includes puraka rajika kumbhaka Uh, but it will come later kumbhaka will come later now one final item i want to tell today is about this om and this sectional breathing so we have done this sectional breathing up middle and down so for these three things a u ma you understand so a is only for upper chest u is for middle chest and ma is for abdomen lower chest so in om we are combining all the three taking a long breath but actually it is sectional just like uh, we have done sectional breathing but then finally combined all the three similarly <coughs> we will now do a u ma breathing with upper middle and lower now do upper take take breath from upper chest a uh, breathe out through upper chest and again after some time we breathe into middle chest do breathe out to middle chest and then to abdomen hmm so these three things we will be doing now each three times start with a take only upper chest breathing 
Full breath, you take all the three together and do three. Now we combine all three and do OM five times. Take deep breath in all the three. Finally, let us do Brahmari also, which is nothing but Om with the ears closed after breathing. <coughs> Mm. 
mouth is to be closed in brahman hmm सर्वे 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 भद्राणि सर्वस्तुर्गा भद्रा पश्य शांतिर्भवूर्ण मंगल लोकास्मस्ता सुखिनो लोकास्मस्ता सुखिनो लोकास्मस्ता सुखिनो शांति शांति शांति